last month, uh, me and my boyfriend went to climb in Tenerife for three weeks. Um, we didn't know that there was uh, any really good climbing out there and um, I've realised that there isn't much or anything on YouTube about climbing in Tenerife or even just travelling there so I thought that I'd put one together for anyone considering going there. So first I'll explain how we got there, uh, where we stayed, how we got around and the costs of each of those things. So we were coming from the UK and we literally just chose the cheapest flights going which were um, £24 return each from Gatwick Airport to Tenerife South which is supposed to take about four and a half hours but it only took us uh, four hours and that was going there and coming back. £24 return did not include baggage but obviously we wanted to take over our climbing gear so we paid for an extra 20 kilograms between us um, so that made it 60 pounds each return so 120 pounds uh, return for the two of us for accommodation we just had a look around on airbnb and we found a place called base camp um, base camp is basically a climbing hostel ran by a really nice guy called uh, it's like david or david and a load of uh, volunteers we stayed there for the whole three weeks, um, or it was 20 days that we were there, and that cost us 400 euros each. So at 20 euros a night, that was including breakfast and dinner. Um, the place has a really big family vibe. They've got a communal area in a main building and almost every night they cook a big group dinner where everyone eats together and discusses what they're doing or where they're climbing the next day. It was really easy to make friends this way and um, that's really good if you don't have any form of transport because people were always happy to car share or offer lifts. Base camp has a few different types of accommodation. So it had tents with mattresses inside upstairs. Um, it had some shared bedrooms. So like three or four bedrooms in the main communal area just coming off from there. And they have bunk beds in them. Um, I think it's up to like four people at the time, but that could have been because of COVID. So maybe they can fit more. Then they have a couple of apartment buildings downstairs. So for the first few nights, we were in the shared one. Um, and then for the rest of the time there, we were in a solo one. And both of these have their own kitchen, their own washing machine and their own bathroom, which is really cool. Um, the kitchens did not get much use while we were there just because they're providing the food and stuff. So that's kind of, it's there if you want to use it. Even though base camp is only a five minute walk from Arico Ortiz, which is a big canyon with loads of climbing, uh, we knew that we would want to move around the island, so we needed a car. We decided to go to Tenerife and planned it all literally within three days, so we ended up being a bit late to the party when it came to car hire. There's a company called Sicar, which hires out cars from the airport and a few other places in the main towns, which is supposed to be the cheapest one, but by the time we arrived, they didn't have anything left. You can also hire cars from people there if you plan ahead, but um, we ended up getting a car from Gold Car at the airport, which wasn't the cheapest and cost us 622 euros for the 20 days. We went to Tenerife in early January and we stayed until the end of the month and the temperature stayed around 18 to 20 degrees most of the time and was really nice and warm in the sun. Yeah, you definitely wanna be climbing in the shade. At night, the temperature dropped to maybe 16-ish degrees, which wasn't cold, but because it gets quite windy there, you definitely want a down jacket or some kind of layers so that you can wrap up. We had gone to Tenerife about four years ago um, and that's just when I had started climbing so we didn't really do much climbing while we were there but from what we remember and from what I can see online to confirm it, it is way too hot for climbing at that time so I think the good months are a UK winter is like a good time to go because it's around 20-ish degrees, maybe 21 <clears throat> but in the summer that gets close to 30 really easily. 
the temperature also changes like all over the island so you can go to Las Americanas which is like a really touristy area near the beach um, down south and that gets a lot hotter than Arico, which is where base camp is um, because that was also up quite a bit higher in the mountains so yeah you avoid the heat a bit that way other things to do um, there are a lot of Facebook groups that we were shown so if people are into um, like quite spiritual things or um, like quite yogi things there's a lot of like ecstatic dance goes on cacao ceremonies different yoga and breathing classes and just a lot of that kind of thing is like happening all the time in different parts of the island some pros of Tenerife um, I would say there was a really good crowd um, being at base camp is a nice difference to staying in like a private Airbnb. Um, you're forced to meet people and having food sort of sorted for you in the morning and the evening is really nice. Saves you kind of going back and forth from shops and just like you can't really go wrong for 20 euros a night. Actually, I think it's 25 euros a night and if you stay for two weeks or more, then it goes down to 20. Also, I'm not sure how they decide on which room you're gonna get. So I think it's just what's available at the time. So we were really lucky to get that private apartment. I think you can kind of just be put anywhere unless maybe you specifically request that you want to stay somewhere, but that's gonna be down to availability. The accommodation was obviously really cheap for what it was. Um, there's a lot to do other than just climbing. So hike, sightsee, surf, and then the things that I said are on those Facebook groups. There's a lot of stuff. There is a huge variety of rock. So we went to a few different crags and it felt like at every crag there was a different type of rock. So getting from one side of the island to the other takes about an hour and a half. Um, and the top half of the island is just like a completely different place. It was super green, like you've got Mount, uh, Mount Taidi right there. It's, yeah, that was really cool. Some cons of Tenerife are, you are definitely gonna wanna have some form of transport unless you're gonna be happy trying to tag along with other people which isn't always going to be guaranteed um, if you're happy just going to the few crags that you can get to within walking distance then that would be fine um, but generally you're going to want to have some kind of transport also personally and looking on UKC and just generally speaking to people there it, the grades are pretty sandbagged especially those lower grades so my max grade is 7B and I did a 7B while I was out there and that, that really did feel like 7B but the, the easier grades at 6A and even the 5s and the 6Bs there was 6A pluses that felt like 6Cs um, you're going to want to find easy, easy, easy climbs if you're a beginner or if you just really want to learn fast Another downside is Kalimas. So there's like dust that comes over from the Sahara, I think. And that's completely random. They don't seem to know when it's coming. It just kind of shows up and stays around for a couple of days. And the air is just full of dust and it's super foggy. The sun looks like it's just being blacked out by sand and it just gets in your lungs and in your eyes. It was quite intense and happened a couple of times while we were there and stuck around for two or three days each time. To sum up, I would say Tenerife is 100% worth a visit, especially if you're coming from the UK. Um, it's just really close. 
it's a really nice temperature to get away from the UK winter and you can just do it so cheaply and there's just so much stuff to do so hopefully this helped a bit and yeah go go to Tenerife go it's good <laughs>